Once again, Nick Kyrgios finds himself in drama after recently responding to Croatian player Warner Chorich's recent statements. Chorich was the second big name in tennis following Grigor Dimitrov to test positive for COVID-19 after competing in the widely controversial Adria Tour. One of the most outspoken figures has been Nick Kyrgios, who tweeted this after Chorich's apology. Bone had a decision to go ahead with the exhibition. Speedy recovery, fellas, but that's what happens when you disregard all protocols. The Aussie also made a video calling out Alexander Zverev directly for not going through the standard quarantining protocols, saying the German was selfish. 23-year-old George sat down with Croatia's Jutarji List newspaper to give his thoughts on the matter. I agree, it is not good. Zverev did a bad thing. But I don't see a need to criticize fellow players in such a way. I wouldn't do it. But again, it's curios. I read what he wrote, but I simply don't care since he likes to be a general after a battle. If someone else was teaching lessons, I would have maybe understood. But curios, it's somehow not realistic. But okay, it's his style. That's how he functions. I have no problem with that. Neither does it bother me on a personal level. Now compared to statements that Dominic Team and Boris Becker gave in regards to Nick, I didn't think this was too bad. However, Nick still took offense to the Korat's comments, taking to Twitter to speak his mind. You should care. Do you have rocks in your head? Again, you can't stand up for your mates. I'm just trying to hold them accountable. When I said what I said, I didn't intend to bother. They are tennis players. They aren't special. Just as I thought. George intellectual level, zero. Donut. He went on to say, Borna, just making sure that you spuzz didn't cause more players to feel like Dimitrov. Have you read how he continued to feel after he tested negative? Or that's too much for that brain of yours to process? To be honest, I usually side with Nick when he calls out players, but this time around I feel like he's doing too much. He wasn't even this harsh with team, who in my opinion have far worse things to say about him. One of the main things that I'm getting from team and George is that they don't respect Kyrgios because of the manner he's criticizing them. Other people, and himself, might not see his little digs as harmful, but calling them names like spuds and donuts was surely a turnoff for them and makes them have little respect for both Kyrgios and his comments. At this point, I feel like Nick is doing a bit too much with his public calling out of the players, especially seeing that this incident occurred over a month ago. I guarantee that Team, Djokovic, or Chorich will respect him and even respond better to a private conversation without the invectives, but him airing them out on a public platform definitely diminishes the message's effect. Now one thing people have been talking about recently was Nick possibly being a hypocrite as he recently partied in a nightclub with some friends. There is a difference here though between this and Zverev's partying because while both locations sold few cases, Zverev literally went out a few days after being in close contact with COVID positive players in the Adria tour. He was dishonest and did not self-isolate like he said he would, which is why everybody was upset. Moving on from this topic, as the professional tour's resumption nears, the upcoming entry lists are being released. The Cincinnati Open just released theirs, and it includes most of the top players, with the exception of Roger Federer who had a double knee surgery, Gael Monfils, Stan Wawrinka, and Fabio Fognini. On the women's side, a lot more big names were missing, as world number 1 and 2 Ashley Barty and Simona Halep were not to be seen. Additionally, former U.S. Open champions Sloane Stevens, Naomi Osaka, and Bianca Andreescu are not signed up. This is a bit surprising, seeing that these players committed to play the Open, but Sloane's absence is not that shocking, seeing that she played World Team Tennis and is set to compete at the Top Seed Open in Kentucky on August 10th. Possible reasons for Naomi and Bianca could simply be wanting to prepare more and save their bodies for the Open, which is smart especially for the injury-prone Andrescu. I think this tournament will see a lot of withdrawals, firstly due to the fact that many of these players on the list will have little intentions of even competing at the US Open. Rafael Nadal is one of those players, as he's been seen frequently practicing on clay. Him playing the Open is unlikely though, as he committed to play the Madrid Open, 
which starts soon after the final in Flushing. Rafa may come to America just to play Cincinnati, but that's highly unlikely. Another reason why I believe there will be many withdrawals is because it's only a week before the US Open. In order to peak and save their bodies for the Open, these top players might play a few rounds, then withdraw later. Nonetheless, I hope both the Cincinnati and US Opens have strong player fields and that everything goes smoothly. That's all for this video and let me know your thoughts of the Kyrgios Chorich Scrabble. Do you agree with Nick that Chorich's response was poor or did the Aussie overreact? Also, do you believe we'll see the current player field at the Western and Southern Open when it comes time to play? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below and subscribe and click the notification bell so you're notified whenever we post new developments on these stories. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time here on Grand Slam Tennis News Today.